Hello, my name is Amy Blythe and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Overcome Connected Vehicle Deployment Challenges to Enhance Road Safety. We're excited to get started, but first I'd like to go over a couple of housekeeping items. All attendees are in listen only mode. If you have questions at any point throughout the webinar, please use the question box in your GoToWebinar attendee panel. We'll save a few minutes at the end of the webinar today for some Q&A. If we don't get to your questions today in our time together, we'll answer them directly via email after the webinar. Additionally, you'll have the opportunity to answer a short, short survey when you exit the webinar. It will take just a minute of your time and your responses are very important to us and help us create valuable webinar experiences for you in the future. So let me introduce our speakers. First off, I'd like to introduce Shane Sump, who has over 22 years of experience in the information technology field. For the last seven years, he has focused on intelligent transportation systems, or ITS, as well as mastering connected vehicle, or CV, applications and architecture, gathering, analysis, design, oh, excuse me, in design. Um, his experience in all software and application development lifecycle phases, including requirements requirements gathering, analysis, design, coding, testing, and maintenance. Moreover, Mr. Zump has pioneered architecture design for CV applications as the technical lead for the Wyoming Department of Transportation Connected Vehicle Pilot Project. Second, I'd like to introduce Zaritza uh, Zavievich, who is a PhD and a connected vehicle strategist. Dr. Zavievich has 10 years of experience in traffic engineering, transportation, and logistics, including her doctoral degree in transportation engineering at the University of Wyoming and a master's de degree in traffic and transportation engineering from the University of Belgrade, Serbia. As a connected vehicle strategist, she focuses on the implementation and evaluation of operation and safety performances of various applications in the CV environment. She also has a strong background in traffic signal operations and ITS. Sarita, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Amy, and uh, hi to everyone. So for the beginning, uh, I want to give you a short integration introduction about Chai Hydro for everyone who hasn't had a chance to meet us before. So, just a slide, Amy, please. Thank you. So, Chai Hydro is an environmental engineering and consulting company covering a wide range of expertise, including uh, roadway design, traffic studies, in the deployment and development of uh, transportation, new transportation technologies such as connected vehicles is part of technology services and solution business unit. So Chai Hydro started to work uh, with connected vehicles in 2015 with Wyoming Connected Vehicle Pilot Project. And since then, we have, uh, we have been focused on building of connected vehicle environments for different states and becoming a leading technology firm for rural connected vehicle technology. Next slide, please. So the reason why are we here uh, is to speak about the broader connected vehicle deployment and how to help to fight to save lives in our roads. As a, remember, as, as a reminder, in 2021, which is the first post-pandemic year in it's still not totally recovered traffic volume. Uh, we had the highest uh, number of, of traffic fatalities for the last 15 years, counting close to 43,000. Uh, based on data that is available so far, uh, National Safety Council estimates that we could hit as high as 46,000 traffic fatalities in 2022. Uh, on average, yearly occurs about 5.9 million crashes, where about 1.2 of them is weather related. If you are speaking about work zone traffic crashes, 
Uh, during 2020, which is pandemic year, in very low traffic volume, we actually saw an increase in traffic, uh, in work-related traffic crashes, in based on estimates from US, the US Department of Transportation during 2021, there is an additional increase about 18%. Next slide, please. So being transportation professionals, we need to use all available resources and tools to combat these numbers. So today, we definitely will speak about connected vehicle deployment and challenges that come with that. We also will speak a little bit more about travel information messages as a very important tool in connected vehicles to combat uh, and prevent, especially uh, weather-related traffic crashes. And we also will cover uh, and review Corvus Intelligent Transportation System, which, which is our answer and way how we address those challenges. Uh, during presentation, we also will speak about the third-party infrastructure and how we can use existing resources. We also will give uh, information about situation data exchange and how situation data exchange in Corvus can bring advantages in and address challenges for connected vehicle deployment. In the end, we will do a little uh, short overview of architectural design for both of those systems. Next slide, please. So vehicle to everything communication enables, enables uh, many safety and traffic operation applications that could save lives and improve traffic efficiency through exchanging data about uh, road, weather, uh, traffic conditions, berg zones, uh, timing, uh, signal timing data, vehicle trajectory data. And through all studies that are conducted so far, uh, through all those connected vehicle pilot projects that we had, through experience of about 38 states that had a chance to deploy connected vehicles, at least on some of their uh, corridors, we definitely can say that connected vehicles have been proven to save lives. And we need to start to deploy them, regardless of challenges that come with that. So today, we definitely will speak about those challenges and our effort to address them. In the first place, um, there is a very high cost to, to develop con and deploy connected vehicles. And that's additionally uh, followed with uh, uh, lack of certainty in technology that is in, your, in use. So we had to switch from dedicated short range communication to CV2X. We also experienced reduced bandwidth. So that will definitely affect many connected vehicle applications and messages. And I hope we still actually don't really have a clear path in direction regarding those issues. And I hope that we probably will hear a little bit more during ITS conference and V2X uh, summit that is coming in less than two weeks. But besides that, there is also constant upgrades, updates and changes in standards. So if you develop an application, you have to make sure that those applications are interoperable with, with previous versions. And having all those uh, together, we have very low uh, market penetration rate of connected vehicles on our roads. And getting back in circle, low market penetration rate, again, additionally slow down further deployment of connected vehicles. So regardless of all of these challenges, we need to continue to work hard and employ different approaches uh, to reach the goal of the broader connected vehicle deployment and try to change this direction with uh, traffic crashes and traffic fatalities. And besides that, also um, successful connected vehicle deployment is, is, is kind of foundation for automated driving. Next slide, please. Uh, so going in that direction, I want to stress a little bit more attention about uh, travel information messages and their and importance of travel information messages. Uh, based on, on the current V2X uh, application map list that's developed by ITS America, uh, travel information messages or teams are on that list as a priority messages. 
And the Department of Transportation recognized how important these messages are. And they developed 511 tool, which is mostly even before connected vehicles, and it's mostly used through web or cell phone applications. Uh, but it also comes with some limitations. One of them is uh, that most of the drivers are actually not aware of that tool. And for drivers who are using 511, and if they're driving through different states, they actually uh, have to log in a separate application every time. And if you don't have service, or if you're trying to do it during driving, that's mean a very, very destructive driving. Uh, for drivers who are not even aware of that, they're relying only on like GPS tools, which they are great and they are getting more and more accurate, but they are not providing travel information messages. So with development of connected vehicles, travel information messages are, are becoming more available to georeference and messages that are intended, they're intended to inform connected vehicle drivers of situation data. And these teams are following all connected vehicle standards like J2735, and they're encoded and decoded based on international travel information systems uh, to ensure that all phrases remain interoperable between different, uh, different type of user, uh, of user equipment. Uh, additional thing that is very important about teams is that uh, they are following MUTCD standards and messages that we, uh, the drivers are getting in vehicle are already formatted in a, in, a, in a way that is familiar to drivers. They get used to, to see those signs along, along the roads. Next slide, please. So speaking about uh, teams, I want to draw special attention about a travel environment and travel information messages that will warn drivers about changes in road conditions due weather. Uh, any changes uh, any changes can impact uh, driver capabilities, can impact uh, vehicle performances such as stability and traction, reduce uh, payment friction or similar. And especially here in Colorado and Wyoming where we have winter about six months per year and where ro uh, road closures, snowing blow, ice road or similar uh, are daily events. So, same, so having accurate and real-time travel information messages can help to reduce some of those 1.2 millions or 21% of total crashes that are happened because of the weather. And actually can save some of those 5,000 lives that are lost in these type of crashes. Next slide, please. Uh, how now we have a question how we can uh, provide better, more comprehensive uh, travel information system that is available statewide, that is not privileged only on, on corridors that were selected for connected vehicle deployment. Uh, how we can make, uh, make tra teams available and accessible, accessible to drivers so with the minimum destruction during driving and at the same time affordable for states uh, to deploy them. <clears throat> Pardon. And how we can, can use our existing infrastructure uh, that is governed by the third parties, how we can improve uh, the tool that more, more, most drivers are familiar, like GPS tools, and to get travel information messages. Next slide, please. So we recognized all those challenges and not only recognized, we actually had to face them to our uh, projects with Wyoming and other states. And we developed a Corvus Intelligent Transportation System. And Corvus reduces the, crash, the deployment cost and helps states to develop connected vehicle technology statewide using the existing infrastructure and engaging the power of third parties uh, while at the same time, um, it helps to create travel information messages by ingesting data from different sources, validating that data, and creating secure and trusted teams. Which is also important about Corvus. It is technology agnostic. 
So even now when roadside units are shutting down and they are not operable, we actually have travel information messages uh, along uh, to our entire Wyoming state. Next slide, please. So what, what's the Corvus and how it works? Corvus is an interoperable cloud-based system that supports vehicle-to-infrastructure communication. And it's capable to generate and create travel information messages. Information that Corvus uses to generate teams uh, originate from trusted infrastructure owners and operators. And Corvus just simplifies uh, connected vehicle messaging by formatting them, encoding, and integrating with, exist, uh, with the security credential management system. And Corvus is seamlessly integrated in existing uh, traffic management set, uh, software, center software. Uh, after messages get created, uh, Corvus delivers them to uh, roadside units network and deposits them on situation data exchange. We definitely will speak a little bit more about situation data exchange later. And from SDX, all those messages are available to, ter to third parties to disseminate them further. Uh, additionally, Corvus uh, manages all active messages by automatically removing them, updating, or adding uh, teams on a given road segment. Next slide, please. Uh, what are the major features of the Corvus? Uh, Corvus enables integration with roadside units. Uh, it also provides roadside units monitoring that include network monitoring, different alerts and notifications that are displayed on roadside units dashboard. Uh, that, uh, Corvus also have team management interface that support the communication between TMC and Corvus. And it also supports security, uh, security management system integration and integration with, uh, with the situation data exchange. Next slide, please. Uh, how is Corvus integrated with Traffic Management Center? Uh, Corvus uses a client-hosted uh, client hosted system that allows communication between the client, uh, client TMC and Corvus clouded uh, Corvus Cloud hosted an infrastructure that is uh, controlled uh, under, a, under a consistent and, se and secure communication protocol and also support uh, all requests to create, update, or delete uh, travel information messages. And at any moment, it's possible to obtain uh, the status of, of all the current status of all active travel information messages. Next slide, please. Uh, here we have an example of travel uh, of team management. Uh, so it's possible to see active active teams, uh, status of uh, roadside units, and status of integration with uh, SDX. Uh, in order to create a message, a message, it's necessary to know type of message. In this example, is given advisory, the type of events. Like here, it's a blowing snow. Uh, it's also necessary to have a uh, uh, georeferenced uh, area where the message will be broadcasted, as well as a, a timeline when this message will be active. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, roadside monitoring, or maybe better known as a CV manager, uh, helps to track status of roadside units and if they are if they are receiving messages or having any issue. So at each moment is possible to see if, the, if roadside units are working properly, if they're having any issue with network, if they have a slow or falling uh, falling connection, if they need to be arrested or maybe arrested is already attempted, but uh, still something doesn't work. However, in provide a, a various resources before a crew has to go on the field and check roadside unit. Next slide, please. All right. Um, thank you very much, Zaritza. So you just heard Zaritza talk a lot about the need here that we're, the reason why everybody's here today is obviously to, to try to reduce the number of fatalities that we're having on our roads and being able to learn how connected vehicle messaging can do that. Um, I'm gonna really focus on 
first on the, the situation data exchange, um, what it is and how it came about, um, and then how it actually works to be able to not only um, be able to be a different source for distributing connected vehicle messages, but also will reduce costs associated with connected vehicle deployment. Um, how it also integrates with the Corbis system that uh, Zerich just spoke about. Um, first, I want to just give a little bit of background on what the Situation Data Exchange is and really how it came about. That, that started with um, the Situation Data Warehouse, and that was a system that was built out uh, by the US DOT that uh, really supported a central data exchange or a central repository for connected and autonomous vehicles to support a nationwide deployment. Um, Wyoming used this to be able to distribute messages um, for satellite delivery of travel information messages onto its roadways for the, the Wyoming Connected Vehicle Pilot Project. Um, that project started with us being able to, wanting to deploy connected vehicle messages for the entire stretch of I-80 that runs through uh, Wyoming. That's over 400 miles. We only had budget for about 76 RSUs. Each of those RSUs only has about a one kilometer range. So there was large gaps of coverage um, for our connected vehicle deployment. In order to plug those gaps in coverage, we partnered with SiriusXM to be able to distribute those travel information messages over satellite using the Situation Data Warehouse. In 2019, we actually, um, the US DOT came to YDOT and said, we don't want to support that Situation Data Warehouse um, hosting as well as development going forward. So Trihydro stepped up um, really in partnership with Wyoming and later on in partnership with the Northwest Passage States to be able to um, really build out and develop the uh, Situation Data Exchange and re, um, really rename the warehouse to the exchange, beef up the security and really look at extending the coverage for a nationwide deployment. Um, really, it is a central repository for CAB messages that includes works on data exchange, uh, travel information message, the roadside safety message, as well as map messages. We're currently aggregating all of the WZDX data feeds that are um, being, that are currently available via the uh, USDOT's uh, website or registry of WZDX feeds. Um, we're also being able to have data distributors query and push to vehicles. So SiriusXM is act, uh, actively doing that. Um, Tom, Tom, some GPS map tools. Um, you can use any LTE communications as well as satellite communications to push these messages out. What this allows us to do is to reach a much wider audience and address that market penetration rate that we're lacking right now for connected vehicles. Um, so in addition to that, we, Trihydro really wanted to extend the coverage for our connected vehicle messages. And we approached Wyoming a while back and, and asked them, you know, what, what were their thoughts on being able to get these connected vehicle messages out to the traveling public, folks that are just on the road that don't have an OBU installed as well as a display for these messages. Um, what was the best way that we could do right now to extend our coverage? Um, so we integrated and built out a uh, Alexa traveler information skill and then deployed that out um, for essentially a nationwide deployment that integrates with the SDX. Um, we, did that mostly to support um, our traveling public and did that on Trihydro's 
Um, we did not get funded through that for Wyoming or anything like that. Um, it was strictly because Trihydro sees the need to be able to try to uh, get this information out. Uh, next slide, please. So in addition to the Situation Data Warehouse's initial integration for, or SDX's initial integration for the I-80 corridor, we wanted to be able to expand coverage statewide. It worked so well on that I-80 corridor and being able to distribute those messages that uh, Vince Garcia came to us and said, is this possible to also get to all the state and federal highways in Wyoming? Um, so we actually did that and it didn't take us very long to do so. Um, we <clears throat> went out and um, built out the road network for all of Wyoming and then were able to integrate with uh, YDOT's TMC to be able to build out travel information messages and deploy those statewide. So all of our connected vehicles for the pilot were able to receive messages on all state and federal highways in Wyoming. Um, and that is something that any state can now do, given the SDX and then the uh, ease of use of building the TIMS through Corvus. Uh, next slide, please. In addition to being able to support those onboard units and the connected vehicles, we can now have third-party applications like uh, TomTom or SiriusXM traffic be able to use these same connected vehicle messages to display these messages to drivers in their roads on their online navigation systems. Um, we can also expand that to apps that can go through and retrieve this information via LTE. I think Zaritza spoke to that a little bit earlier. But uh, so things like Google Maps or Siri would be able to, we built out proof, proof of concepts for this, uh, be able to build out messages so that drivers could see information on any roadway. Uh, next slide, please. I also wanted to touch on some current active uh, development that we're working on for the SDX. And the image that you see here is a, actually a problem that we've really recently run into in YDOT, um, where we're having GPS devices try to route drivers around road closures on I-80 and other interstates in Wyoming. Uh, this driver, there was a road closure between Rollins and Rock Springs. This driver was routed around on some local roads. And as you can see, they did not successfully make it through those local roads. Um, so we're working with Wyoming to be and local counties in Wyoming to identify um, cascading road closures for local roads and being able to communicate those local road closures out to Google as well as other GPS navigation devices. Um, that are routing these folks around the, the major interstate road closures. Um, and then we'll be able to build out connected vehicle messages and distribute those through the SDX um, to those drivers so that they are not routed around um, IED road closures or any interstate road closure for that matter. In addition to that, we're actually uh, building out push notifications for that traveler information skill that I mentioned earlier. Um, so any road closures, uh, users can subscribe to push notifications so that it will, I, it will essentially notify them that there is a road closure for a particular road segment, or they can also receive notifications when a road actually opens back up. Um, this just negates the benefit to keep uh, hitting refresh on the 511 applications uh, website. Uh, next slide, please. So in addition to what we're actively developing on, uh, we're also looking at um, additional capabilities for the SDX. Um, these include increasing the search capabilities using GraphQL support. Um, GraphQL is a querying language 
that will be able to um, pull data, geographic and otherwise, um, so that anybody who wants to distribute messages can query by message type, they can uh, query for specific geographic areas, um, and it'll really be something that improves efficiency as well as just our overall support for um, querying the SDX side of things. Again, this is uh, something that we see as uh, something that we want to support nationwide. We believe that there is really a need for a nationwide system where all DOTs can push messages to and we can pull support from for query. Um, it also, we're looking for uh, this, the, uh, the SDX as a communication hub for DOTs. When I spoke earlier about the road closure and the cascading road closures um, for road segments in uh, Wyoming, that also affects other states. So during that same IED road closure um, for Wyoming, we had some GPS navigations that would actually route users through local roads down in Colorado. So um, there was also state rescues for vehicles in Colorado, including freight vehicles. Um, I think I saw an Amazon truck uh, getting pulled out of one snowdrift in Colorado. Anyway, we want to be able to notify uh, from state when when a particular incident or road closure may affect other states. So that center to center communication. Um, so that in the case of a road closure, then Colorado may want to do some other cascading road closures um, as well. We also look at uh, are looking into being able to build out a data source lookup support for SPAT messaging. Um, if you're not familiar, SPAT messaging is uh, essentially messaging done at an intersection that will transmit information about an intersection's current uh, state and the timing for um, time to red, time to green, um, and all the current state of the actual intersection as well as the plan for that intersection. Now, this can be very helpful to be able to communicate out to drivers um, so that you can tell them of red light violation warnings, um, time to red, time to green, a lot of really cool applications that we can do there. But it does require sub-second latency, um, so that near real-time data. And being able to push that data up to the SDX and then push it out to third parties, we see as being probably too much latency to be effective there. So we wanna build a feature within the SDX that allows drivers to be able to, or allows um, data distributors to be able to look up data sources for SPAT messaging. So if a particular intersection is broadcasting its data at a particular IP address, um, we can register that within the SDX, and then that driver can get pointed into the right direction to be able to retrieve that information and uh, display it to the driver. Uh, next slide, please. So how do the Corvus and the SDX systems work? Um, starting early with Wyoming, they wanted to be able to uh, support building out traveler information messages, but do it in a way that didn't take any time from our TMC operators. Um, the TMC operators have a ton on their plate. They don't have time to do additional um, tasks in there. So that connected vehicle, building out these connected vehicle messages, they, didn't, they couldn't support another system or another task for their TMC operators to perform. So we built out an API for those TMC applications to be able to integrate with. Um, and I'll go into pretty much how the traveler uh, information messages are built out and how they're distributed here in the next few slides. But in addition to just traveler information messages, Corvus also supports the next gen of uh, connected vehicle messages that are coming. So roadside safety messages, 
um, are pretty much the next generation of the traveler information messenger. As that um, standard gets finalized, the support will be in there for the Corvus system. Um, the TIM management website, so being able to actually go in, have a website where you can view all of the traveler information messages or roadside safety messages in your state, um, having something in there to where you can uh, review all of those as well as add new ones if you need to. Um, that's particularly helpful for static traveler information messages. What I mean by static traveler information message would be something like a, a curb speed warning or a uh, bridge height clearance. So you could actually add those into uh, our TIM management website for Corvus to be able to distribute that over the SDX as well as your roadside units and then um, integrate that for your overall connected vehicle messaging strategy. In addition to the um, what I've mentioned here, the Corvus and the SDX system both take into account security. Um, we, we believe that security is critical to the overall connected vehicle ecosystem. Without it, um, you drivers will not trust the messages that come from the system, and that is critical um, to the overall success of connected vehicle messaging and the deployments for that. Um, so in addition to when we took over the Situation Data Warehouse, we built out additional security for the Situation Data Exchange. Only authorized DOTs um, and IOOs are allowed to push data to the SDX. Only correct, uh, correctly encoded and uh, built out travel information messages are accepted. And uh, we also require that SCMS integration as well. Um, that SCMS integration, so for the security credential management system, we want to make sure that all of the uh, messages that are distributed from Corvus as well as through the SDX are trusted. Uh, next slide, please. So how do we build out a uh, travel information message? What, what goes into it uh, from the Corvus side of things? Well, we start off with location. Um, so that is your beginning and your endpoint for the path that you wish to be able to build out a message for your drivers for. Um, next, we look at timing. So when is that message applicable? And uh, what what are we actually going to, um, when do you want those drivers to be able to receive it? And how long do you want them to see it for? So um, in particular, the, some of those messages can be out there persistent, like I talked about earlier. Um, so you can have stuff that is consistently out there, or you might not know the end time for it. So you might wanna be able to refresh that every X number of minutes. Um, in addition to the timing for it, you also want to be able to convey what type of information, right? So in this instance that we're, we want to be able to push out a, a TIM that has an accident as well as traffic stopped. But this could be anything. It could be your road conditions. Um, it could be uh, the road closure. It could be that there's an event um, and you want to watch out for event or heavy traffic, um, parking information, etc. Building out the TIM is what Corvus does. It takes all of this information that the TMC application gives it, builds out a roadway path, uh, and it does this to the smallest uh, message size possible because we need to have these messages so they're super compact and they can travel over the air. Um, next, we, we want to look at building out the traffic direction. Um, so that heading slice and that pie that you see there between the box and the map um, really de defines the, the travel direction that that um, traveler information message is applicable for. And then um, you also want to build out that message information that gets converted to ITIS codes. 
Um, the ITIS codes are really the heartbeat of what actually gets um, conveyed to the driver in the vehicle itself. And then you put a uh, start and an end time on that travel information message. You encode it into Uber encoded uh, J2735 standard. And then um, from there, it gets signed by the security credential management system and then can di get distributed to either your roadside units or the situation data exchange. Uh, next slide, please. So the tip generation and delivery. So again, this is this is just a different, this is more or less the system diagram for the overall um, Corvus and SDX system, how it works with your drivers and the vehicles on the roadways. So your TMC applications like your ATMS system, a lane closure system, so it could be any construction management system that you use, um, any pretty much application where it conveys critical information to drivers on the roadways um, will feed that, that data that I just spoke about previously into Corvus. So your start and end path, um, the, uh, the actual timing for it, as well as the message information. That gets pushed into Corvus. Corvus then builds out those travel information messages and distributes those not only to the SDX, but also to the applicable roadside units in your network. Um, from there, the roadside units start broadcasting that information to any connected vehicles on the roadways. And um, it also goes, from the SDX side of things out to the Sirius XM satellite, where we can broadcast those same messages out to um, OBUs that have satellite um, receivers and are capable of receiving these messages through Sirius XM satellites. Right now, Comsignia is actually building this out and integrating it to their OBUs. We hope that other um, OBU manufacturers We'll also start integrating these satellite receivers in there to be able to uh, receive these same messages and display it to those drivers and their OBUs. So in addition to that, um, we also have that third-party application delivery to um, drivers in, that have their SiriusXM traffic in there, as well as the third parties like your your TomTom. Tom, um, the Amazon Alexa skill. I, I use that pretty much every day, uh, especially in the winter time when the road conditions are bad. Um, there's a nice Amazon uh, Auto uh, Alexa Auto device that you can actually query to see road conditions between your location and destination. Uh, next slide, please. So this slide goes into a little bit about the SCMS integration. Um, it really is just talking to adding one extra layer in here for the Corvus um, that is talking out to the ISS uh, TMC authority. And that, that essentially signs our uh, traveler information messages and then distributes those. So the previous slide goes over the overall process. This goes over and uh, adds that extra layer of security. All right, next slide, please. So today's presentation really discussed uh, a, a lot of different things. Um, so went through quite a bit. We talked about the CV deployment, challenges associated with that. Um, we reviewed what traveler information messages are, how they're used. Um, we also, the pre, uh, sorry, Zarita spoke about the Corvus Intelligent Transportation System, what that is and, and how, it's, how it can be used to allow a DOT to really rapidly come up to speed with connected vehicle messaging um, technology. We also spoke about the opportunities to leverage third-party infrastructure. And this is really important because it allows DOTs like YDOT to be able to distribute these same connected vehicle messages as drivers on the road without having the burdensome um, investment of a lot of RSUs, especially in uh, very rural areas. Um, so you can really benefit from that third-party infrastructure system that's already in place. 
um, being able to distribute your messages over satellite or LTE. Um, we also discussed the needs and benefits of the nationwide situation data exchange, having that one central source of truth that uh, is trusted and um, third parties can use to be able to pull that information, we see as critical for uh, the nation or infrastructure. Um, and then I finally spoke about, you know, sort of how that Corvus system, the SDX system works. Um, next slide, please. So what's next? Um, I also wanted to touch on Trihydro's vision. We really do see that uh, we want to improve the safety, security, and mobility of our communities through advanced connected and autonomous vehicle messaging systems. Um, it's one thing that I'm really proud of uh, working with Trihydro on. They see uh, a big investment and a commitment to our communities. Um, Safety is, is always key for us. We want to see all of our employees come home um, well. And Wyoming is one of the worst places for road conditions in, um, in the nation. And I know there are other states out there that have a lot of really nasty road conditions. Um, so we want to be able to make this affordable as well as support any state out there that wants to come up to speed on this uh, technology. So we're looking for um, sort of volunteers in here to be able to um, help us out with some pilot programs. We'd like to evaluate your current TMC system and see how quickly we could um, bring the Corvus system and integrate it in with those, as well as you know integrate with the, the SDX system as well. Um, if you already have a, a system in place, that's able to generate these uh, CP messages. We can just, you know, hook you straight up with going straight into the SDX. Um, let's see. Based on, I think the TRB conference uh, put it really well when they when they really wanted to push for 2023 as the year of deploying connect vehicle technology. Um, we would really like to see more and more states deploy this, as well as uh, be able to support CB technology as it becomes um, more available to vehicles on our roads today. So with that, um, I think if you can go to the next slide, you know, thank you very much for attending. Um, we really appreciate it. Be happy to answer any questions that you may have right now. Um, so yeah, I'll hand it over to uh, Amy and she can just shout out any questions if we had any. Great. Thanks so much, Shane and Sarita. Now let's move on to that Q&A we just referred to. Remember, if you do have questions, make sure to put them in the questions panel in your GoToWebinar attendee panel. Um, Shane and Zarita, we did have a couple questions. Uh, the first one is, has there been coordination with OEMs to get the system integrated into vehicles? So that's a, that's a great question. Um, so we have had discussions with, uh, with GM in general, um, being able to support their uh, traveler information message um, systems. And I know that GM has on their roadmap to be able to push um, travel information messages and display travel information messages in their vehicles. I believe, don't, don't quote me on this, but I believe starting in 2025, those um, models will be coming out with that TIM support. Um, we have been actively working with them um, to be able to bring them up to speed on how to integrate with the SDX and what benefits that provides, um, as well as being able to push those messages, not through just an RSU, but through that SDX system. Okay. Um, next question, how could a data consumer benefit from using SDX? On the data consumption side of things, um, not having to aggregate all of the data out there, or having to look up and find out where to be able to aggregate information and instead just pulling all of that information from one trusted source 
is really what we see as the future for um, the SDX and being able to support um, those data consumers. Um, we also want to be able to integrate directly. So if a data consumer uh, has a need to pull data in their particular format, uh, the SDX also allows us to be able to uh, do some of those tasks. So um, if a data if a data consumer relies on, say, the uh, WZDX version 4.0, um, and we have a bunch of different data sources for 4.0, but some that are on 4.1. Um, we can actually convert from one message format to another and be able to support that for your um, for those data consumers. Just makes it easier for them. Great. How can Corvus be applied? To in an urban network? So that's a great question as well. So Corvus is, is not strictly for rural um, rural areas. In particular, the Wyoming is a very rural area and it's being used for um, communications out, mostly for road conditions. Um, but urban areas can really benefit from connected vehicle messaging and integrating with Corvus um, by pushing out messages for um, current road conditions out on their roads. If there are wildfires out there, if there's flooding, and you need to uh, inform a large amount of drivers um, as quickly as possible, then you know that Corvus system along with the SDX really helps with that. Um, so it just it just benefits um, not only the rural but also the urban areas um, quite a bit. Um, I think we have time for maybe two more questions. Um, are there any limitations in the data quantity that could be ingested, consumed by SDX? Uh, no, that I think as I mentioned earlier. Um, the SDX is built out to be massively robust. Um, we have built the system so that's cloud hosted. Um, it's in Azure. We have the ability to be able to query as well as hold um, a massive amount of data. So uh, from that perspective, we have no limitations on how many messages we can get in, how many we can actually get distributed. Okay, so looks like last question. Can any of these solutions be used for applications like red light violation warning, transit priority, or something similar? So that, that's a great question. Um, on the Corvus side of things, it's really meant for connected vehicle messaging, including that traveler information message. Um, that can be used in conjunction with uh, so you essentially need to push out a very or a speed limit traveler information message as part of the red light violation warning so that you can calculate whether or not a driver is going to um, violate that red light based on the current vehicle speed, the speed limit, as well as um, when that light is going to turn. So uh, from that perspective, it definitely supports uh, red light violation warning. For transit signal priority, not so much. Um, that's really reliant on that SPAT messaging, as well as the uh, SSM and SRM, or the signal uh, service request, as well as uh, signal status message. Um, so those, so as far as the uh, transit uh, signal priority, no, but definitely for other applications uh, such as red light violation. All right. Well, I think that wraps up our questions that have come in. Um, keep in mind, if you do have additional questions, please be sure to fill out our exit survey. There's an opportunity in there to request a one-on-one -on -one time with our experts to answer additional questions and discuss your state DOT needs. 
Also, please be aware that a recording of today's webinar, along with the PowerPoint slides, will be delivered to your inbox in the near future. Thanks so much for joining us and have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.